graphing rational functions is not easy. Like you got to find asymptotes, you got to find holes, you got to find X and Y intercepts. It is a process. And so in this video right here, I'm going to be going over that process and showing y'all how to graph rational functions. So with that being said, get you a pencil, grab your notebooks, and let's get it. I got it. sauce, baby. I got sauce. What's going on YouTube? I'm Almond with the Sauce and welcome to another Algebra 2 tutorial. As you can see from the title and the thumbnail, we're going to be going over graphing rational functions. So make sure y'all do these problems with me and uh, let's get into it. All right. So when you're graphing rational functions, right, there's really five things that you have to find. Your horizontal asymptote, any holes that might be in your graph, your vertical asymptotes, and there actually might be more than one, and your X and Y intercepts. So once you find all five of these things, then you can go ahead and graph your rational functions. So with that being said, uh, I'm just gonna go in order and show you how to find each one. First thing you wanna find is your horizontal asymptote. And what you wanna do in order to find that is first look at your degree. And what I mean by that is, you know, it's a rational function, so you have a numerator and a denominator. You're gonna wanna look at the degree up top and the degree on bottom. And for anybody who doesn't know what the degree means, it just simply means whatever highest exponent is in both your numerator and your denominator. So there's one of three situations that are gonna come up. The first thing that can happen is that your degree on top is gonna to be bigger than your degree on bottom. If that does happen, there is no horizontal asymptote. The second possibility is whenever the degree on bottom is bigger than the degree on top. And whenever that happens, your horizontal asymptote is actually just gonna be y equals zero. And the third possibility is when the degree on top is actually equal to the degree on bottom. Whenever this happens, what you're gonna do to figure out your horizontal asymptote is take that leading coefficient up top divided by the leading coefficient on bottom, and whatever you get, that's gonna be your horizontal asymptote. All right, so let's look at this first example. Um, first thing I'm gonna find is my horizontal asymptote. And then, like I said, I wanna look at the degree up top and the degree on bottom. In my numerator, my highest exponent is a two. Same thing with my denominator. So this is this case right here where the degree on top is equal to the degree on bottom. And to find that horizontal asymptote, all I gotta do is top leading coefficient divided by bottom leading coefficient. And so my horizontal asymptote is just gonna be three divided by one, which is three. So this next one right here probably is the one that takes the most work if I'm being real. Holes, or if you wanna be fancy, call them removable discontinuities. And basically what it is is like, you know how you can't divide by zero, right? So holes are gonna exist whenever you factor out the top, factor out the bottom. And whenever you have factors that cancel out, whatever one of those bottom factors are, whatever x value is gonna you know, make your denominator equal zero, that's the x coordinate of a hole in your graph that you're gonna have. And so you know, in order to do that, you're gonna have to factor. The best thing you can do for yourself is get good at factoring because you, know, you can't really graph rationals until you know how to factor. So in this top one, I'm just gonna notice that they all have a greatest common factor of three. And so I'm gonna factor that out first and see what I get. All right, and then what I notice is that inside of those parentheses, that's just a regular trinomial. I know how to factor that. Uh, I'm thinking of two numbers that can multiply to give me negative five, but those same numbers add up to give me negative four. Negative five and positive one. So I'm gonna factor that out just like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna factor out my bottom. So two numbers that multiply to give me negative 10, but add up to negative three, uh, negative five and positive two. So once I fully factored out my function, I'm gonna look and see if I have any factors that cancel out. And so just looking at this, I see I got an X minus five on top, X minus five on bottom. Those are gonna cancel out. So therefore I'm gonna have a removable discontinuity in my graph, okay? And so how the whole works is basically, it's a point, you know what I mean? So it's gonna have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. And the way you find your X coordinate is literally just, you know, look and see what x value will cause there to be a zero in my denominator. And so, you know, y'all know we can't divide by zero, so that's the whole reason there's a hole right there, is because my function cannot exist at this x value that will cause my denominator to equal zero. So just looking at it, I know five minus five will give me zero. So the x coordinate of my hole is gonna be a five. And then we have to find the y coordinate of our hole, which is very easy to do. Um, but before I find my y coordinate, what I'm gonna do is just you know, finalize my simplified function. And to figure out what the Y coordinate is, I'm gonna plug in five for X and see what I get for Y. So 
when I plug in five for X, here's what I'm gonna get. So it's gonna be three times five plus one over five plus two. And whatever I get, that's gonna be the Y coordinate of my hole. Cause you know how this whole thing like equals Y, you know, F of X equals Y equals. And so I'm trying to figure out the Y whenever X is five. So three times six, that's 18 over five plus two, that's seven. So 18 over seven is gonna be the Y coordinate of my hole. Finding the vertical asymptote is really easy. It's whatever X value will make my denominator equal zero in my simplified function. So just looking at the denominator, I can just look at it and tell if X was negative two, then you know negative two plus two gives me zero. So that X value of negative two is my vertical asymptote. All right, so when I'm going to go graph that, I'm going to have you know like a, that vertical dotted line right at x equals negative two and then the x and y intercepts uh that's pretty easy because you know x intercepts exist whenever y equals zero y intercepts occur or exist whenever x equals zero all right so i'll just go ahead and find my x intercept first remember this is the point at which my graph crosses the x-axis so at whatever point that is my y coordinate is going to be zero so you know, this is what y is equal to right here. And so if I want y to equal zero, that'll happen basically whenever my numerator equals zero. So really I can just set my numerator equal to zero and then solve for x. Three times x plus one equals zero. All right, um, well, divide by three on both sides. So then I got x plus one equals zero. So just looking at that, I can tell that x equals negative one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say X intercept is negative one whenever Y is zero. And then I'm gonna go ahead and find my Y intercept and I'm solving for Y whenever X is zero. So in that same simplified function, I'm gonna replace X with zero and then solve for Y. So this becomes three times, and I can kind of do this in my head a little bit. I know zero plus one is just one over, and then zero plus two is two. So that just gives me a Y coordinate of three over two. And so my Y intercept is gonna be zero comma three over two, 1.5, same thing. Now that I have all five of my key attributes, I can go ahead and graph slash plot these. And then that's basically all I need to do in order to graph my rational functions. I should probably have some cool like transitional music playing right here while I erase this. Asymptote y equals three, go up three. I'm gonna make a dotted line right there. We're just gonna pretend that's straight. Uh, okay, my hole is gonna be at five comma 18 over seven. That's like what, two and some change? Two, yeah, it's like a little over two and a half. So that's gonna be like somewhere in there. So my vertical asymptote is gonna be at x equals negative two. Go over to the left two. Go ahead and make my vertical asymptote, okay? And then my x and y intercept. So my x intercept is gonna be at negative one comma zero. And then my y intercept is gonna be at zero comma 1.5, okay? For anybody who doesn't know, all rational functions, well, most rational functions kind of have the same kind of shape that they take where they kind of like hug both of the asymptotes and kind of curve off. So it'll look something along these lines. Skip over that hole. Again, because if my function did exist right here, uh, I would have a zero in the denominator. So that's why that function doesn't exist at that point. And then my other part of my graph goes something like that. All right, and that's pretty much what it is. And then the last thing I wanna do is talk about the domain of this function because it kind of solidifies you know what it means to have vertical asymptotes and removable discontinuities uh what a lot of times what they'll do instead of having you like say the domain they'll just be like all right the domain is all real numbers except what values or they might even call them domain restrictions all right and so just looking at my asymptote my vertical asymptote and my whole i know that x cannot equal negative two 
I also know that X cannot equal five. If they did, then I'd have a zero in the denominator. So there it is, that's how you graph it. All right, y'all, so that's gonna wrap up the video. I appreciate y'all for watching. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up button as well. Uh, I'm gonna leave y'all with one problem to try on your own. Once you think you got it, head over to my IG. I'm gonna link it down in the description box below. And with that being said, I'll catch y'all in the next one. I said that right before I look like a, a goofy degree on oh see all right y'all so that's gonna wrap up the video the video I'm not blood